Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today is another Tip Tuesday video for you guys. The last few weeks I've been spotlighting different mediums that you can use in your faith journaling, and so this week we're gonna take a look at watercolors, and that's probably one of the other most popular uh, mediums to use in Bible journaling because you're able to still see the text through most watercolors, and there are several kinds of watercolors that don't bleed through your pages um, when they are not prepped with gesso. So they're a great medium, one of my favorite favorites to use in Bible journaling. I love playing around with it. So let me show you a few examples in my Bible um, where I've used watercolors. So here you can see I've used it on both the pages. This one here is using the Pelican watercolors, which is closer to like a gouache than a true watercolor. It's very, very opaque, um, very thick, very creamy, uh, very vibrant and pigmented, which I like. It's just not quite the texture that I like to work with, um, but they are a good quality paint. This side here is using Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. It is a uh, Japanese watercolor, which I'll show you all of those in a minute here, and links will be down below. But um, this, again, is a very uh, rich, thick watercolor, one of my favorites to work with. This page in particular, I used the salt technique where I added salt to the wet watercolor and then brushed it off when it was dry to get this kind of mottled texture in the background. I do have a process video for how to do that technique on my channel, so I will link that down below for you guys. I won't be showing how to do that in this video. This one here is another way to apply watercolor other than a brush. I used Q-tips, so little cotton swabs to apply watercolor in this stippled effect. I do have a process video for this page on my channel, so check that out. This is using those Kiritake Gonzai Tombi watercolors. So very pigmented, but you can still see the text through the watercolor, which I like. Uh, this style here is a little bit more my jam. I like to sketch and draw and uh, then fill in with watercolor. And so this again is the Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. And one thing about watercolor is you can layer it. So if you lay down a wash of color and then let it dry and then add a letter, layer, let it dry, add a layer, you can build the color intensity, build the dimension in that image. So if you're feeling like your images are feeling a little flat or childish, you may just need to go back in and add a few more layers of watercolor um, to add some interest. Here's an example of a simple way to use watercolor. So I just used watercolor to fill in this little cup of coffee and the ground here and then some splatters. And this again is the Kiritake Gonzai Tombi watercolors because I just love how rich and pigmented they are. And you can see I only added watercolor to a small area of the page. So it did create some like puckering of the page, but this page is almost a year old. So over time with my Bible closed, it has pretty much flattened out almost completely. So if you're worried about wrinkled pages, they really do flatten out quite a bit once your Bible page is uh, closed. And you can see the Kiritake Gonzai Tombi do not bleed through the page, just shadowing. And then here is an interesting technique using alcohol with watercolors. So alcohol in your watercolor creates this kind of blooming effect. And so I do have a process video for this one, so you can check that out and see how I created this. But there's a lot of different fun things you can do with watercolors. So let's talk about the different types of watercolors and then I'll show you some different things that you can do with them. Okay, so I have more watercolors than any one person would ever need, but they are my favorite medium to use, and I love exploring with different brands, different types, um, different colors, different finishes, uh, so that I can bring them to you and show you what works and what doesn't work. So here is kind of a pile of the ones that I use. Um, this one here is probably one a lot of you have seen. It's very popular in the Bible journaling community. Uh, this is the cheapy set from Michaels by Artist Loft. You know, it's around $5 or something like that. Um, and and a lot of people start out by using this. Now, this one is not my favorite because it does dry down and have a very chalky finish that will transfer color to your other pages. Um, it doesn't bleed through the pages, but it has a chalky finish. I do have a Tip Tuesday where I show how to do with, deal with that chalkiness, so check that out. Um, this is a great starter set if you're just not quite sure about watercolors and want to experiment a little bit first for not a lot of cost, this is the way to go, but I would quickly move Move on past these if you find that you like watercolors. Uh, this set here are the Pelican watercolors. These are the ones that I did that kind of mountain scene with. Uh, and these are the ones that are kind of similar to a gouache. So they're kind of 
a cross between gouache and watercolor and that just means they are very um, opaque they are very vibrant um, but they're just not quite as I don't know, they're just not quite the same texture as some other watercolors. They're not bad. Some people swear by these, love them. I don't love the texture, but they do ha are very pigmented if you're wanting very intense pigmentation. Uh, this set does come with some white tube paint if you wanna use that. Um, and you can see it stacks up here. You have a little palette that you can mix colors in. Um, so yeah, these are a good option if you're wanting to move up from the Michaels brand. Now, my personal favorite are the Kiritake Gonzai Tombi. These are a Japanese watercolor. And uh, I believe I have a review. Maybe I just have used them a lot. Um, I got my set at Hobby Lobby, but you can find them for a lot cheaper on um, Amazon. And so these are more opaque than some of the other watercolors that I've used, um, but they're just very vibrant, very creamy, and they are in these little pans that you can remove if you wanted to add a magnet and maybe make your own palette. There is a set slightly larger than this that includes the some of the starry colored um, paints. These are the uh, shimmery golds, um, so they do come with that, or they have a smaller palette than this. So they do have a few different sizes. I love the color intensity intensity and color choices. Um, I saved the little plastic insert so I have somewhere to mix colors. Uh, I bought the Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors separate um, from Amazon for fairly inexpensive. I don't love the packaging of these. I wish I had bought the bigger set in the green palette, but that's okay. Um, so they are still in these little plastic pans that you could take out, and these are all different shimmery golds in all different um, kind of shades, I guess. So, so gorgeous. So I bought this just to kind of maybe mix with some of my other watercolors or use as a finishing touch, um, and just to try out. I love gold, I love shimmer, and so I got those to try out. My second favorite are probably going to be the Prima watercolors. I have a review on my channel for these for several of the palettes. The palettes typically come like this in one of these tins, kind of like the Illustrated Faith watercolors, um, but I've deconstructed my tins, but normally they come in here. I've taken mine all apart and combined my sets into this tin. I do have a process video for this also showing how I put this together. This is several of those sets, but um, these little squares would be popped in here. They have several different sets with color families. I love that these are portable. I love that they are translucent while still being very vibrant. These are excellent quality. They are considered, I mean, they're in more of the craft range than fine artist range. Uh, and what plays into that that is light, uh, light fastness. But if you're working in a Bible, you don't really have to worry about light fastness because your Bible is closed and so it's not getting exposed to light all the time. So you can get away with using some cheaper um, craft watercolor paints just fine. Um, so these are the Prima watercolors and again I went ahead and just combined mine all into this one palette. Um, you also have the Illustrative Faith watercolors which is a similar system. So it's these little half pans in a palette like this. And um, these are much more pale in color, I would say. You can build up the intensity. I don't use these as often as my Primas, but if I am using Illustrated Faith products, I will reach for these because I know these are colors that are gonna match the Illustrated Faith palette. So if you're somebody who uses a lot of the Illustrated Faith die cuts and papers and stickers, you may wanna go for these watercolors because Shauna Noel herself handpicked these colors to match the line of products from Illustrated Faith. So I did go ahead and take the black out. There is a black in here, um, but you do have this option. Um, and they are on sale occasionally, so watch for sales for those, and they come in that nice little tin there. Now, in this palette, I also have some half pans that I created using some tube watercolor. So you can buy these pans empty on Amazon and then fill them with tube watercolor. And then um, I add a little magnet and then you could create a palette. And um, Daniel Smith are a artist quality uh, watercolor. These um, are the Primatech line, and so these are actually made by grinding up different minerals and rocks 
Uh, Daniel Smith are very pricey. Of course, there are even more expensive, but these are very pricey. And so I just get the little smaller five, I think they're five milliliter, yeah, five milliliter tubes. Um, and then you can just squirt out the watercolor into the pans, let it dry, and then if you just go in with a wet paintbrush, it activates that paint. And I still have paint in here where I can refill these if I want to. So they do sell their regular um, watercolor, tube watercolors in small and big tubes like this. By the Well for God sells some of the Daniel Smith watercolors as well. So if you're wanting to go super fancy, um, these, some of them have like glitter and things in them and they're just really pretty. And you'll notice they kind of settle and react and blend differently than craft watercolor paints. Uh, here I have a set of Reeves tube watercolors and these are an inexpensive uh, tube watercolor that I got from Michaels uh, in a bigger tube. And I just like to make sure that I I really kind of knead it and mix it before I use the paint because it will kind of separate and the oil will kind of separate to the top. Um, so you do want to kind of mix it. And so you can get a like a like a tile or a plate or they have um, porcelain palettes that you can um, put these into, let them dry, and then just reactivate them. Uh, I don't play with these too much. The smell is horrible with these, and so I don't like the smell of them, um, but you can use something like this. If you prefer to watercolor, I prefer them already in the pans and ready to go. So there's a look at some of the different watercolors I have. Now let's look at some of the different things that you can do with the watercolors. All right, so like my past videos, I'm gonna use my Canson mixed media paper to show you these techniques. I am gonna work with the Prima watercolors just because on camera it's a little bit smaller and easier to use here. And then I have a variety of brushes here. I always get asked about what brushes I use. I am not a fancy watercolorist. I would rather spend my money on fun, colorful products than brushes, but I know a good brush makes a difference. I'm just not there quite yet. So I usually buy my brushes from Walmart or Hobby Lobby lobby. Um, I really don't invest in my brushes at all. I usually buy ones that are several to a package and they are um, not natural bris bristles. They are manufactured bristles. So, I mean, if you really want to get into it, you can look at some of the pros and cons of using different bristles types and stuff like that. But I have those. Um, but typically I like using a water brush. So there's this one here from Arteza. And then there's this one here from um, Pentel. Mine are pretty battered and well loved. Uh, you can see you can fill the barrel with water. If you just squeeze the side or squeeze here, it flows into the bristle. And then you can just work... Um, with the wet brush that way. So there is that option. Um, if you're gonna work with a brush, you wanna work with two containers of water. You want your clean water and your dirty water. So when I start, I go into my clean water. With these watercolors, I can just kind of work my wet brush in there and you can see it activates the color. Um, and then I can go ahead and paint. When I wanna go to clean my brush, I'm gonna clean it in the dirty water, rinse in my clean water, and then I can go back into another color without contaminating the color with dirty water. So this is actually how you're supposed to work. Now realistically, when I'm in the mood and I'm just going for it and in my jam, I I mix things up, stick it in my coffee, drink my paint water, all kinds of bad <laughs> happens. But this is really uh, clean your brush, double clean your brush, and then you're good to go. So you do typically wanna work with uh, two sets of water there. And you can see I just uh, get my brush wet and then I kind of wipe off any extra water and then go into the, into the color. By adding more or less water will change how intense the color is. So if I go in here with just plain water, I can bring out this color and really fade it out and get it very, very pale. So just playing around that way. Some other ways to apply watercolors, you can use a baby wipe. This is a technique that I've seen Sandy Allnock here on YouTube. She is an amazing uh, card maker, but she also dives into Bible journaling. I will link her down below. And so you can um, pick up watercolor on a baby wipe and then kind of 
work it into your Bible page. You can blend different colors together. I'm trying to get colors that I know will be okay. I would probably um, wet your paints first. So I like to take a spray bottle with just plain water and kind of wet all my paints so they're ready to go. Um, and then you can go in and pick up color um, and it's a little bit easier. And so this is a way to get a very white, uh, very light wash of color on your page. She does some amazing um, blending and things like that with just a baby wipe on her pages. You could go in and kind of dab it and mush it and add some texture and things like that for a background. So that's a great way. Um, another way that you can use the baby wipe is with a stencil. So typically you can't really use watercolors with stencils because it's a wet medium and it kind of goes underneath your stencil. But if you use a baby wipe and pick up your color with your baby wipe and then tap it into the stencil, then it's not quite as wet and you can get watercolored stenciling. So I love that technique. Um, another way that I like to create backgrounds are uh, the smushing technique. <laughs> yes, the smushing technique. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a wet paintbrush, pick up some color, and I'm just gonna kinda dab the color onto a piece of plastic. All this is is just some plastic trash from some stickers. I'm gonna go ahead and take a spray bottle, spray this so it's a little more wet, turn it over and then mush this into a page. And yes, this does work on Bible pages. And you get this fun kind of splattered mushed background. And you can go ahead and dry this, add in more colors, add in more layers. Um, and that is one of my favorite ways to um, do a background. Now, watercolor is gonna change depending on whether you let it air dry or dry it with a heat tool. Um, if you let it air dry, it's gonna kind of blend and meld together a little bit differently because it'll have time to sit there um, but if you like how something looks hit it with your heat tell, heat tool and then it is set and good to go so there are some different ways to apply watercolors um, I'm sure there's all kinds of more creative ways um, that some of you will come up with I do get a lot of questions about using gesso so let's take a look at that Okay, so here is a page in my interleaved Bible, and this was from a video recently where I talked about page prep. So definitely check that video out. Um, but I wanted to show you, um, as I was testing out the different page prep products like Gesso, No Gesso, Liquitex Gesso, Matte Gel Medium, I used watercolor over those to show you why I hate using watercolors on a prepped page. So if you use the correct watercolors, you do not have to prep the page because they do not bleed through. Everything Thing that I showed you today, I have had no problems with it bleeding through. So definitely check, you know, test things in the back of your Bible. Um, Crayola watercolors do bleed through. So there are certain watercolors that will be bleed through, but everything I talked about today will not. So this is Kiritaki Gonzai Tombi watercolors, very intensely pigmented. Um, up here we have no gesso. Here is Art Basics clear gesso. Liquitex, this is that gritty gesso and then matte gel medium. And you can see the difference between no gesso and then prep pages. Watercolor wants to kind of sit on top of that product and not blend or not absorb into the paper of your Bible. And so you get these kind of pooling effects with the watercolor, which if you're wanting a lot of texture and you want that look, then that's great. But typically when I'm coloring something in or working with watercolors, I find it very difficult to work with it when like, when it's like this because it's kind of just sitting and moving and doing its own thing on top of the page prep. Whereas on here, it kind of sinks in and is easier to deal with. So you can see on the back here, no bleed through, even with no gesso, there's no bleed through from that paint. So there's no need to use gesso or matte gel medium with watercolors unless you're using a watercolor that you know bleeds through, like Crayola, um, if you're using a dye-based um, like watercolor brush marker or you know distress inks that are dyeing, something like that, 
then yes, you wanna use a gesso. But if you're using any of the watercolors I showed today, there's no reason to prep your page. You can work on an unprepped page. So um, there are some tips and tricks. I hope that's helpful. It definitely is not everything. You'll have to watch some of my watercolor videos. I do have a playlist titled watercolor of all my videos involving watercolor. So watch those and there's always little tips and tricks along the way. Um, and so you can see how I do that. If you have questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.